Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing a classic PlayStation 1 game which is near and dear to my heart. Uh, this game was released in 1998 and it is my introduction to the concept of a 3D platformer essentially. Uh, you know, Mario 64 was the first 3D platformer, but I never had Nintendo 64 as a kid, so I got to play this first. Um, I had an Atari 2600, we had one as a family, which, that was super primitive. <laughs> uh, then we ended up getting, I think at some point we had a Sega Master System, not a Genesis, or Mega Drive as they're called over here. Uh, so I didn't get to play those games at full 64-bit, sorry, 16-bit goodness. Um, but yeah, after that we got a, we had a Super Nintendo as well, but we never got it to work in colour for some reason. So I thought games like Super Mario World and Link to the Past were supposed to be monochrome as a kid. Obviously they're not. I've, had, I've played them in emulators since then, and now I know what they're supposed to be like. Uh, but then we got the Sony PlayStation, and that was my introduction to the concept of a 3D platformer, really. We had Crash Bandicoot, and we had this game. Uh, this game made a bigger impact on me, because while Crash is very linear, uh, Spyro is an open-world platformer, a lot like Mario 64. Um, actually, I'd say a lot like Banjo-Kazooie, really. You don't get kicked out of the levels or anything, you can just keep exploring. Uh, so this is the opening cutscene here. I can't hear it, I have audio off, so... Okay, rolling. Oh, um, basically, the dragon is giving a bit of an world, interview so about how the villain Ganasty Gnork, or Nasty Nork, if you will, is, um, we now have 12, is um, treasure, not gonna or be a threat at all, thousand. and he's watching this live because what that's about how this documentaries Ganasty work, Gnork I guess, character. who knows. Now I understand he's found um, a magic spell to and, turn yeah, gems so into warriors for his cause. There he is, and he'll basically Nasty turn Nork all the dragons into statues, except for Spyro for some reason. I think it's because Spyro was tiny. I can only restart the side of the game. Sorry. Um, but yeah, basically, Nasty Nork zaps all the dragons. They turn into those statues like that one in front of us right there. Except for Spyro, who is fine. Uh, so this game, it was designed to be played without a bit like an analog controller because the P PlayStation One didn't have one by default. Uh, it does have analog support, but it's kind of limited. Uh, I'm using the analog stick right now. You can see I can change the speed I move at, and I can walk at a couple of different angles. Uh, the right stick doesn't do anything, though. There's no camera control. You have to use the L2 and R2 buttons. Interestingly enough, um, Mednafin, when I was configuring the controls, this is, I'm using my Pro Controller, and the L2 and R2 buttons, which is ZL and ZR, of course, actually have analog, which I thought they didn't. Um, like, they came up as analog axes when I was configuring in Mednafin, instead of coming up as buttons. Which is really interesting. Anyway, so this is uh, Hub World. Uh, this game has a lot of Hub Worlds. This is the first one. Uh, and basically you progress through the Hub Worlds by getting to a certain quota of dragons rescued, or treasure, or dragon eggs. So it's kind of like an Odyssey, where you don't have to do every level, you don't have to do everything, you just have to do a certain quota of stuff. Um, so we're gonna just do what's in the Hub in this video, and then I'm gonna cut it off there, because this video is gonna be a bit tricky to record. Um, to, to publish, not record. Um, see, I'm using Mednafin's um, built-in footage recording feature, but once I've done that, I'll have to add my commentary track using a separate program because I'm recording out in Audacity, and then I'm gonna have to actually squish down this video because for some reason Mednafin outputs PlayStation video at max, like, doubled width, um, so it looks really stretched and weird, so I have to squish it back down. So there'll be a bit of fiddling to do. Uh, anyway, so to free a dragon, you just walk up to them, and they'll give you a little bit of advice about the game. Um, this is fully voiced, which is pretty cool. Thank you for There's releasing no subtitles, so I don't know Free what it's saying right now. In but... the world. Then find the balloonist. He'll yeah, there's a lot of talk to the next world. <laughs> what about nasty work? I'm going after I think that was just rescue dragons first. dragons first. I can't really remember. That's all I can. And yeah, that's that's. One of the main things in the game. Once you save the dragon, you can stand on the little platform here to save your game or watch the cutscene again. Um, and that's like a checkpoint, basically. If you if you happen to die in a level, you'll respawn at the last one of these that you stood on. Uh, that wasn't slow waiting on game save. There, I just had to press X. Um, so yeah, X is X is jump, uh, and you can glide as well. Uh, circle is breathe fire, which is your primary attack. Um, kills most things. Uh, square is charge, like this, which can knock over a lot of things too, and it's good for fast movement. And triangle lets you go into this sort of, uh, 
Mario Sunshine-esque first-person view. There's not really a first-person view. <laughs> uh, L1 and L2 let you roll like this, which doesn't get used very much, but it's kind of cool. Um, the later Spyro games would add more uh, interesting options, but this is all you get in this one. So these are the gems you have to collect. You want to get all the treasure. Uh, when you have your Firefly here, they'll help you grab treasure by poking at it, otherwise you have to actually touch it. Uh, your Firefly is like your health bar, basically. You can see how it's gold right now. When you get hit, it will turn blue and then green and then disappear, and then Spyro will die. Uh, you can heal up your your Firefly by finding uh, random animals, like these sheep here. If you kill a random animal, like this, you see a butterfly, Spyro will eat, Sparks will eat a butterfly and heal up. So, similar to ukulele, <laughs> which happens, you know, decades later. A <laughs> uh, bunch of treasure here. Uh, all of the enemies in this hub world actually just run away from you. I think that's so you can get used to the controls and stuff. Um, pretty good. Uh, down here is the Balloonist. Uh, basically, there's one of these in each world. You go to the Balloonist, they can take you back to previous worlds, or they can take you onto the next world once you've done whatever the quota is, which is ten dragons here, as you can see. And yeah, you can use them to travel back to all the previous hubs as well. So, basically, they're the Odyssey. <laughs> Except they're not positioned at the beginning of the world. You have to go find them. Uh, they're not usually too tricky to find, but some of the later hub worlds are much harder than this one, which is, you know, completely trivial. Uh, I don't think I got you yet. Uh, so yeah, all the enemies have gems inside. Uh, once you've defeated them once, instead of giving you a regular gem, they will give you, like, a pearl instead. And pearls add up to extra lives. So, I think I haven't hit you yet? Maybe I have. No, I haven't. Uh, blue gems are worth five, reds are one, greens are two. It doesn't matter too much, you just want to grab all of them. Uh, we should be able to get all the treasure and stuff in the hub in this first video without too much trouble. I don't know how long this is, there's no, like, counter of... Oh, and I can look at the audio recording, like, seven minutes, okay. Um, normally I look at the Game Capture HD thing and tell how long the video is, but, uh, Madden Defend doesn't do that. Where's Nasty Nork? I'll torch him! Keep your horns on, Spyro! You have much to learn first! Do you know what the dragonfly following you is doing? Um... His name is Sparks, and he's helping and protecting you. Keep an eye on him, and see what I mean. Uh, like in, um, banjo Kazooie and Ukulele and that, you have a sort of totals option here called Inventory. You can see we've got half the dragons here, and a bit less than half the treasure in the artisan's home. Uh, this will be grouped by world, so the extra le the other levels in this world will show up underneath home, and then we can scroll across to the different worlds. Once we've gotten them unlocked, of course. Uh, as a kid, I thought it was super impossible to get the treasure up here, but it's actually really easy. You just glide like that. I, I don't know why I had so much trouble with it, honestly. <laughs> I think I was just bad at video games as a kid. <laughs> um... I really was. In Link to the Past, I, like, I couldn't get through the Hyrule Castle section at the beginning. It was too difficult for me. Uh, which was annoying, because you can't get to any of the more interesting parts of the game. Uh, this is where the boss of the world is. I believe this will unlock if you've done a certain amount of other stuff. Uh, and you can go into the boss level inside. Uh, the bosses are all completely optional. It's just that there's a lot of treasure and stuff in the boss levels, like in the other levels. I think this dragon tells you how to open the boss door, but I forget what they say, so... <laughs> cool Flash! Do that again! The artisan's boss is through a portal in the dragon mouth, but you are not yet ready, Spyro. First you must complete one of the other artisan lands. Anyway, yeah, three dragons. There's one more we'll find in this hub. I'm just gonna do the hub in this video. It'll be short, but I want to be able to make sure the whole process works without doing too much actual gameplay. So... Yeah, I'm gonna cut this one off relatively short and just merge it together and see how we go with the squishing it down, all the other stuff I said I had to do. Uh, there we go, plenty of gems, plenty of gems. Uh, there's one more set of gems out here, and then that should do the trick for this hub world. I was a dragon too. I think this one tells you something about gliding. Hey Spyro, press the jump button twice to glide, and, and don't be afraid. Afraid? Of what? Not sure. Falling from high mountain peaks, plummeting into prehistoric glaciers? Oh, that. 
So yeah, compared to Odyssey, this game is not that friendly to like deaf players. Like in Odyssey, there's text for everything on the screen, and the sounds are not important in the vast majority of cases. Well, they sound great. Um, also, this thief guy, you go take him a couple of times, he'll drop a gem each time you hit him, and then eventually he'll actually get defeated and drop a whole bunch of gems. There you go. Easy peasy. Uh, in here we got a little whirlwind thing, you stand in that and Spyro will basically fly up. Whoosh. You have very little control of that, it basically just takes you where it wants to and that's it. Uh, these are the level entrances by the way, you can see the level name on top of it there, and you can just walk through that archway to start the level. I'm going to do that in this video though. Gem, gem, gem. Another gem. Uh, we want to get the ones on the other side too, so we'll go back up to the little whirlwind. Oh, and the sun back here as well. Um, so yeah, you want to make sure you get everything in the game, because it's a collective one. Anything that you collect stays collected regardless of whether you die. You have to worry about redoing things very often in this game, which is good. So what am I up to? 90, oh, I know what I've missed. Uh, there's one more level that we haven't actually seen yet. We haven't gone to any of them, so we haven't actually seen any of them for real, but there's one more we haven't seen the entrance to, which is inside this hedge maze over here. Here we go. Uh, so you can grab these little jammies inside the hedge maze. The level entrance is to the back. It's not really much of a hedge maze. It's like it's super linear and easy to get through, but you know. Uh, in here we have the last little bit of treasure, there we go, 100 out of 100. And this is an extra life, you can see it's a little Spyro statue. Uh, this game does have lives, which is a bit um, silly considering the kind of game it is. It sort of makes sense because usually you respawn in the level at the last dragon you touch. If you get a game over, you will respawn at the beginning of the home world that you're in instead. So you are losing a little bit of progress if you get a game over compared to just dying. So I guess that's okay. I don't know. I, st I still think that lives are outdated and silly, but uh, they're all right. I mean, this, this, this game is almost as old as I am, so it's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that's the first hub world of uh, Spyro the Dragon for the Sony PlayStation, a game I hold near and dear to my heart, and I'm looking forward to the remake of getting released on the Switch, I hope. I'm not sure if it's going to be the Reignited Trilogy or whatever. That would be good if it were, because then I could play it. If it's only on the PS4, then I can't, because I haven't got one of those. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope this works. Like, yeah, this, is, this was a big hassle to set up. Um, and yeah, I, ho I hope it all works out, and I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it isn't too annoying for me to edit this back to the way it's supposed to be. We'll, we'll see. Um, probably gonna have to use iMovie and re-encode some, some crap. All that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's, uh, that's Sparrow the Dragon, the Artisan's Homeworld. Check the inventory just to make sure. You can see we've got everything here. And we've done 2% of the game already, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, what's in the options? Alright, oh, you can mess with a couple of different things here. Vibration? Interesting. Um, I haven't noticed any vibration. I don't think it's working with my controller. I'm not sure if Mendefend supports that or if, um, you know, the, the, um, if the Pro Controller on a Mac supports that. It might, it might not. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.